So the first two weeks of Advent have come and gone, uh, but they do seem a bit of a blur. Uh, things are happening really quickly. Many of us, I'm sure, are knee deep in Christmas shopping and Christmas decorating. And today we light the third candle. Joy Sunday is what we call it. Also, I like to call it Hump Sunday because we're literally just over the hump and just two weeks now till Christmas. Some Advent wreaths actually distinguish today's candle with pink or light blue to highlight the significance of this Sunday. Traditionally, in this third week of Advent, the, jo the theme does seem to revolve around joy, also called Gaudet Sunday, which means rejoice in Latin. I'm sure you've heard that before. While Advent is indeed a time of preparation, of longing, and of waiting in the shadows for the coming of Christ, there is also room to anticipate with joy what this means for us. Much like a child may anticipate the coming of their birthday and the excitement of what that celebration may entail. And so the readings offered today give us that, hope and joy even in the midst of despair or, or hopelessness. This third candle reminds us to rejoice in this time of preparation as we await the coming of the true light, the light of Christ. Do not despair, for we are almost there. The waiting is almost over, so be patient, stay faithful, and continue to prepare your hearts and minds. Hope, don't despair. I don't know about you, but in today's gospel lesson, I couldn't help but wonder and empathize for John the Baptist as he awaits in prison. And I wonder what was going through his head about his very uncertain future. How scared and alone he must have felt. And what a difference in the image of John today than the image that we had of John the last two weeks, where he was preaching with authority, repentance, and judgment of the coming Messiah. John, who had left the wilderness to prepare the way of the Messiah, now finds himself in a new kind of wilderness, one of despair and uncertainty. Now in prison, he feels compelled to ask, to send messengers to ask Jesus if he really is the one. Are you the one who is to come? You're not what I expected, so can you be the one? Now in true Jesus fashion, he really never answers the direct question, but rather simply states, go and tell John what you hear and you see. The blind are receiving their sight, the lame are walking, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf here, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. These are a direct reflection of the messianic expectations found in Isaiah's reading that we heard from this morning. Messianic expectations like those we find in the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, that we sang today as a psalm. It's a glorious hymn of praise glorifying God while also proclaiming the impact that this Messiah will have in this broken, dark, and very chaotic world. Mary's Magnificat is not just a hymn of praise, but a revelatory piece of scripture that tells us about the type of Messiah that will be entering into our midst. This awe-inspiring canonical mirrors and reveals to us the entire soul, the entire personality of Mary. She lays her inner self open, vulnerable for all to see in this beautiful song that has become central to our own daily worship as Episcopalians. It's in our BCP as a canonical. This hymn of hers is a self-portrait, a true icon, an example in which we can see who she really is and who we should strive to be like. I don't suppose there's a more powerful image for the Advent season than the figure of the mother of Christ, 
uh, the Virgin of Guadalupe that we celebrated in the earlier service, who is also the patron, the friend, the advocate, and the supporter of people who continue to be mistreated and marginalized. It's the message of the canticle. God has shown strength with his arm, scattered the proud and the imagination of their hearts, brought down the powerful and lifted up the lowly, filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. That's what happens when God comes to be with the people who need God most. We know her as the patroness of the Americas, the empress of Latin America, the protector of unborn children. And we celebrated her in the earlier service with wonderful music and roses, special, the lighting of the third candle, and even in Sumner's with churros and hot chocolate. It was a joyful Sunday indeed. What an appropriate time for Our Lady to come and remind us who she is, what she stands for, and who from the very beginning has challenged the establishment and the dark forces of the world. Mary, who we honor today, sang about liberation and about a world turned upside down, about the rich being sent away and the poor and hungry filled with good things. She knew firsthand what this meant both as a young, pregnant teenager, and then as a new mother having to escape uh, those who wanted to kill her babe. And ever since, her story and her song have given hope to the poor, the rejected, and those on the margins. So yes, today, in the midst of our waiting, even in the midst of our own despair and difficulties, we also rejoice because hope is coming. When John, the prophet from the desert, sits in his prison of disillusionment, Jesus does not rebuke him for not believing that he could be the one. He does not bemoan him uh, or put him down. He sends people to give him good news, to tell him what they see and what they hear is being done. He sends light. And he does so by quoting Isaiah. The blind receiving the sight, you heard it, the deaf hearing. Isaiah and our reading from James remind us to do this, to be patient, beloved. Strengthen your hearts for the coming, for the Lord is near. Have faith and have hope. The Lord is coming. He will set the captives free and for he watches over us always. He upholds the orphan and the widow. The mute will not just speak, but they sing for joy. The eyes of the blind will be open and the deaf ears unstopped. The lame will not just walk, but they will leap for joy. The world will be made anew. An everlasting joy shall be upon you and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. So rejoice for our Messiah is almost here. Amen. <laughs>